Hi, and welcome to Cheating Death by PowerPoint, Analyze and Synthesize. My name is Laura Foley from lauramfoley.com, and I help people to cheat death by PowerPoint with PowerPoint training and customized presentation design. Today I'm going to teach you about Analyze and Synthesize. This is a process that will help you cut out extra text and graphics on your slides and help you to focus on your main messages. I think we can all agree that many PowerPoint slides have way too much text on them. In the worst case scenario, the presenter reads the slide like a script, word for word, as you can see is being done here. Not only is that painful to watch, but it insults the intelligence of the audience and it's a huge waste of time. If you're going to be that detailed, save everyone the trouble of getting together and just distribute the deck electronically. Because the reason we have live meetings and presentations is to connect with our audience. And we're not going to do that if we're reading slides. PowerPoint makes it so easy to make bulleted lists. In fact, it's the default slide layout. Some people think that bulleted lists are great and use them all the time, and in that way they cover the highlights of their presentation. But bulletizing your main speaking points isn't the answer. It's almost like PowerPoint wants you to fail by setting up this outline sort of structure. Slides with a title, subtitle, bullet points, and any number of subcategories have no place in front of an audience. This kind of elaborate nesting structure is what goes into your outline when you're first developing your presentation. This is like showing your notes to the audience as the final product, which makes you look unprepared, or worse, like you don't know what you're talking about. Ideally, you want your slides to introduce a concept, which you, as the presenter, elaborate upon. All of the subcategories become your script for the presentation. Here's a PowerPoint slide with too much text on it. You can see that there's a title, a subtitle, main bullet points, subcategory level 1, and subcategory level 2. I'll bet that right now you're trying to read the slide while you're listening to me. Since I'm not talking about exactly what's on the slide, there's a disconnect between what you see and what you hear. I'm making you work way too hard to understand my main message. So to get around this problem, a lot of times people will animate text one bullet at a time. Let's see if that helps. Reducing the amount of text in your slides. Design better slides by decreasing the number of words. PowerPoint slides have too much text. You force your audience to read. If your audience is reading, they're not listening to you. If they could just read your presentation, then having a face-to-face -face meeting is a waste of time. I'm not going to torture you by going through the rest, but did that actually make it better? No, this slide is a mess and it has no place in front of the audience. It's too detailed and the reveal is not helping. How do we solve this problem? We do it with a method called Analyze and Synthesize. The first step is to analyze each slide to determine the most important parts of the message. Also at this stage, you would figure out if you need to space your information out to more than one slide, so that each slide focuses on a single message or part of the main message. After you have determined the main messages, it's time to synthesize them into a new, more concise whole. Going back to the ugly slide, we've got four main messages that we're working with, so we're going to have to split this slide up into multiple parts. When we analyze the slide, we see that the main message about analyze and synthesize is way down at the bottom of the slide. Another important point about adding pictures is the last bullet point. Because these two are the most important messages that we want to deliver, we're going to put them up front. Message two is reducing the amount of text on the slides, and in so doing you increase understanding. Message three is not forcing the audience to read, and message four is that too much text is confusing. Now that we've broken this slide down into four main messages, we'll have to create four new slides. In fact, it might be that we'll create more slides than just the four. Nope, I'm not kidding. If you're thinking ahead to any text-heavy decks you've done and you're frantically doing the math in your head, you're probably realizing that after you analyze your slides, the size of your deck is going to increase. But with added animation and transitions, the additional slides will fit seamlessly into the deck and won't necessarily make your presentation longer. In fact, it'll make it better, because by animating your slides, you create a theatrical experience and a more dynamic presentation. Here we are back at this awful slide, and we are going to redesign it. The first thing we'll do is make a summary slide to introduce the concept of Analyze and Synthesize. Afterwards, I'll add two more slides to further explain what I mean. Here's the new title slide that introduces the concept of Analyze and Synthesize, and this would appear briefly as I begin to talk about the process. 
We proceed to the next slides, which breaks the concept of analyze and synthesize into two slides. The first step of the analyze and synthesize process is to analyze each slide to determine the most important parts of the message. And you figure out if you need to create more slides to make your message more clear. Once you've determined your main messages, it's time to distill them down into new, more concise slides. You see what I've done here is I've added an animation which makes it more visually interesting, and the figures pushing the puzzle pieces together is a good visual way to describe the concept of combining something. A picture is worth a thousand words, so let images convey the main messages of your presentation. If you can reinforce what you say with pictures, you'll increase the audience's retention of your message. So here you've seen on this slide that I added some simple animation and included some what look like Polaroid photographs to add a little bit more interest to this slide while I tell people about why pictures are important. Instead of using wordy explanations, as I've done on this flag, Sometimes it's better to use just a picture. To recap what we've done so far, what I did on the previous slides was to combine the messages of analyze and synthesize and use more pictures. Now let's move on to message two. By reducing the amount of text on your slides, you increase understanding. We'll delete the rest of the text on this slide. This leaves the title and subtitle. The subtitle states the main message much better than the main title, so let's get rid of the main title. We're now left with the main message of this slide. Let's make the text bigger and bolder and center it on the slide. We're almost there, but we can edit this text a little bit more. That's better. I've edited the text down. It's using fewer words, but it's saying the same thing. Message number three is that forcing your audience to read is a bad idea. To illustrate this, I am going to present a very dense block of text and summarize it to get to the most important parts. To illustrate the idea of a lot of text on a slide, I chose a passage from Romeo and Juliet. Imagine a presenter putting a slide just like this on, on the screen and stopping to wait for people to read. The speaker would lose his momentum and the fast readers would have to wait for the slow readers to catch up or the slow readers would not finish the reading before the slide advanced. For the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to summarize this so that the audience doesn't have to work as hard. I've distilled that passage down to a single sentence. Names don't matter, just who you are inside. I'd be pretentious to think that I can paraphrase William Shakespeare successfully, but I did want to show you that even a very rich block of text can be distilled down so that there's just a few words that the audience needs to look at while you're speaking. We return to this train wreck of a slide to look at message four, and the message is that too much text is confusing. This message is similar to the previous message of forcing the audience to read, but it's a little bit different because it talks about obscuring the main points of the message. I think that this slide illustrates that uh, problem very well, but I'm going to give you another example of the type that you might encounter in a business presentation. This slide was part of a presentation that was meant to persuade voters to purchase two new trucks for their town. This table presents a thorough analysis and includes lots of data, and this makes it totally unsuitable for a slide. It's great for a printed piece so that people would have time to reflect on what they're reading, but when they're looking at this on, on a screen, trying to read it, trying to listen to what the presenter is saying, and try to come to conclusions about the data, well, that's a ton of work. Let's create a title slide that outlines the goal and the reasoning behind it. We're going to focus on the six-wheel dump truck, and create a new title slide based on just this information. Here's the new title slide and we've included a picture of the truck that the town wants to replace. It's easy now to see how rusty and unused the truck is. The title of the presentation, Two and a Half Override Questions, Why We Need New Trucks, is the main message of the presentation. Since this is the title slide, it's displayed as the audience files into the room, giving them time to absorb the information. To sum up, when you analyze and synthesize, use pictures to illustrate your main points, use less text, don't make your audience read, and focus on your message, 
your presentations will have more impact. If you want more tips like these delivered to your inbox each month, click on the orange button to subscribe to the Design Dispatch, a newsletter about PowerPoint, presentation skills, marketing, and design. Subscribers each receive a free slide makeover, a $100 value. Your slide will be featured in an upcoming Design Dispatch, and you'll receive a PowerPoint file of your new slide to use in any way you wish. You can click on the customized training and presentation design links to learn more about the services I provide. And you can click on these links to get in touch with me via email, to visit lauramfoley.com, to follow me on Twitter, or to like me on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and I hope I've taught you a new way to cheat death by PowerPoint.